We're gonna be talking about some of the accessories that you might have forgotten or you might need once you get your pellet grill. And so today's video, we're gonna be talking about accessories that you probably didn't think about. If you don't have a lot of experience or watch a lot of videos, then hopefully this video today will kind of like make that curve a lot faster and you can determine what accessories are gonna be good for you. First up, it sounds crazy, power. Power to your pellet grill. We all know pellet grills need power, and this is what I've learned. Unless you have a specific place every single time, what if you wanna keep your pellet grill covered, but when you use it, you take it under the cover, right? There, there, there could be many different ways. What I found is a large, heavy duty extension cord, okay? This is three prong because honestly, that's what I could find, but it's heavy duty, and I'm gonna give you a tip. Get it longer than what you might need. Don't try to stretch it like to point A to point B and just ver and just hope that it goes there. Like I mentioned, there could be different reasons why you wanna move your pellet grill while it's in operation. If you notice in a lot of my videos, I always have my cord hanging. I am underneath the covered deck, but there are some times that rain comes in and I'm protected from the outside weather. What's not protected is the water coming in from the ground. So if you have your cord on the ground and it's plugged in, you just wanna be careful or mindful. I've always got mine setting on top while it's in use. That's kind of like a tip of the trade. Just to make sure that that moisture from the ground doesn't seep in while your pellet grill is being used. And the last benefit about having a three prong, even though it's the only one I could find that was heavy duty and short enough, was the fact that what if you are smoking outside but you wanna add something else? You wanna add a side burner, a deep fat fryer, um, anything electrical like a fan or anything. They're actually very handy more often than not. Number two on the list, the idea of thermometers. With the advancement of technology with pellet smokers, you see them less and less used because of the comfort of knowing the inside temperature of your pellet smoker with basically all the brands having a, an app. But just because your pellet smoker has an app doesn't necessarily mean that your pellet smoker is running at that temp. That only matters in certain situations where we're talking about baking, dessert, stuff like that. If you're running a pork butt, it's supposed to be 250. If it goes to 225, 275, you're never gonna know it. It's that even smooth temperature throughout there. There's also hot and cool spots on a pellet smoker. So basically what you're looking at is a, is a wireless system. This has four probes because I like this style. You can plug this in and put this on your smoker close to your meat so you can get an idea of what temperature is around your meat. The rest of the probes, if you wanted to, if you're doing chicken, if you're doing pork butt, doing ribs, you might have all three target temperatures different. So you can take a probe, plug it in, and it'll give you a, a reading for that specific meat. And this is just a laziness. I take this inside and I monitor it. So although these companies are coming out with their own apps, I still defer to something like this. It's a way to double check their app. It's a way to double check their actual internal temperature and you learn your hot and cool spots. In reality, some of my uh, pellet smokers can be off by 50 to 75 degrees on a constant basis. Just depends on where the meat is located. And so an external thermometer like this is very handy. Your probe for your smoker is right there. Now, each smoker is different, but that's that one. So that's the internal temperature that it's reading. What if you want something over here? Your burn pot is always the hottest part of the grill. So this is why it's a great way to have this wireless thermometer. Since we're on the thermometer side, you can pick these up for anywhere between 25 and 200 bucks, to be honest with you. Um, this is one of the cheaper models and I absolutely love it. I've had it for years and it's super easy. The benefit about this thermometer, not only does it show you the instant temperature inside in case you don't have one of these, but it also relates to the term probe tender. You can probe around and not worry about tender or worry about the temperature, I should say, because when you're probing, you're filling for tenderness. Just because your brisket says that it's supposed to be cooked at 200 degrees doesn't necessarily mean all briskets cook at 200 degrees. That's when you start checking, checking for probe tenderness. So this is highly on the list. There's thousands of them out there. I highly recommend something like this. Here are some lessons that I wish I would have learned many moons ago. First of all, if you have a cooling rack, which I use all the time now with barbecue, if you uh, turn it over upside down, it's a lot easier to slide on your pellet smoker because you don't have the feet grabbing onto the, the racks inside your smoker, okay? What I've learned is I do not like this style at all. This is the box, I'm just calling it the box style. Each one food and debris get on there. That's probably some bad food right there left over from early this morning. Um, 
just needs to be washed a little bit more. And the reason why I don't like it is because that reason right there, everything seems to stick in every single corner and it's not an easy way to clean. The solution is something like this and I swear by these, stainless steel, you can put the um, oven cleaner on there, degreaser, and they clean right off. As you can see, it's extremely smooth. There's no bumps like this. Every single time you hit this, it's a bump. Um, it does just as good a job as this. And when you turn it over, you only have these little crevices to worry about. So I put this in the dishwasher. I wash it myself and I've been 100% satisfied with this. I really wish I would have had this from day one, even before pellet smoking. The sheet tray is the same thing. I protect my sheet trays, but I really would encourage you, and I've been guilty of it from day one, is buying odds and end pieces to make something that I needed versus a, a, a set. If you buy a set, it works so much better. This fits perfectly versus this having not enough space. And this is what I've done for the last three years. Until I got my game face on, I'm like, all right, I'm ready. And it, it just makes everything so much better. So. If you're going to spend the money and do it right, get the one that is completely long, not boxed. I like the stainless steel and I would encourage you to find a set. As always, just so you know, most of these links will be listed down below. We put links to stuff that we really swear by. Like I said, the scraper, we probably don't have a link to just because the simple fact of so many people already have one, you can go to the hardware store, whatever you want to do. We don't link to everything. We just link to the stuff that we really believe in. Next up on the list, gloves. And there can be many different variations. Let me show you my favorite. The one that's not pictured, but this comes in it is basically the Oklahoma Joe's comes in a box, but with the count of 50, you get two cotton gloves like this. Now you're thinking why in the world would you want two cotton gloves along with your black style gloves? Because really, I think it's three reasons. One, if you can imagine how hot your meat is on the grill, um, it just adds that layer of protection. You'd put these on, then you put a glove on like this and that heat from the sauce, from the grill, from everything else. Plus, honestly, the more you do it, the more you realize I enjoy moving my meat around if I have to a lot more with my hands than I do a tongs or a spatula or something like that. It uh, protects the bark, you know, that you work so hard to build for, stuff like that. So when you go through your box of 50 count gloves, what do you do with these? Are you throwing them away? I've already got a pair. Do I need the rest of them? If you go buy another box, you're gonna have two pairs of gloves. What I've decided to do is basically do like a system of like your lawnmower shoes, right? Every man out there gets a new pair of shoes, they wear them and then they go to the grass for cutting and then it's like a rotation of like shoes. Same thing with my gloves. So I use these for cleaning. Not every time do I use these, and I'll get to that in a second, but when my grill is cool and I don't want my hands dirty, I can throw on an old pair of gloves like this and what it does, it protects your hands from like all the sharp edges. You'll be amazed how many sharp edges are inside of a pellet grill. Plus, when you're picking up stuff that's dirty, you can pick these up if you wanted to. And if you wanted to, you can put another black glove on top of it and really protect your hands. As dirty as these are, these are extremely clean. Uh, we bleach them and stuff like that. But this is the old dirty pair of lawnmower shoes that you would kind of like uh, relate to. So these are about to be thrown away. And then I would just use another pair. Whichever ones that's dirty enough or dirtier, that becomes my new grill cleaning set of gloves. Now. What I do to offset the cost, because I'm, if I'm not mistaken, the cost of the 50 count Oklahoma Joe is just about the cost of 100 count black gloves. So once I have some of these, I just offset it and get 100 count black gloves. They're readily available on Amazon or any store you want to go to. Honestly, once I have these, I found more, 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 more ways to use these besides just barbecue. Um, Dealing with raw meat, you don't, you don't wanna go inside and wash your hands all the time because you're prepping outside, that can save you. But just household chores and stuff like that, we end up using these way more often inside than we do outside. Moving on, we have these black gloves. I use them all the time. Not only do you can imagine that when you're pulling something like a hot pan, um, a hot pot or anything off your grills or smokers, it kind of just gives you a little bit more deeper protection on your arms. What I've found is you'll be amazed how many times I do this. I'll reach in there and sure as all the crap, I always hit my arm like that. Or I'll reach in like this and I'll try to move something and I end up burning the backside of my arm like that. So these gloves just give you a little bit more protection. They come up on your arm. So you reach in there, you can really feel it. The one thing that I think that gets overlooked with pellet grills, especially when you're new in the accessory game, you're just learning it, is how to clean it. 
Um, this is something from the garage. I already had it. I didn't have to buy it. I'm sure you can find things in your garage or tools that you might need. If not, you can go to a dollar store. You can look online. You can go to, you know, like hardware store or anything. It's just a scraper. Um, I don't use these on my griddle, but what I have found is it's extremely effective way to get the burnt fats, greases, food debris, um, anything you name off your metal. It really works. I would highly suggest whatever you get, something like this. Next on the list, simple magnet hooks. You'd be amazed how many times these things will come in handy. You can hang most anything you want to off of that right there. The good thing about some of these grills, you'll find a ledge or a bolt or something. And since this unique smoker, the Pit Boss Navigator, doesn't have anywhere to store this, I bought some hooks and I hang it off the back so it stays out of the way. I mentioned earlier that with those gloves, it protects you from reaching in there with a hot um, second level. Great, just take it out. But sometimes you wanna keep it in there, right? So what do you do when you need to take it out? Use the hooks. Here's another way to use it. The Pit Boss and most pellet smokers today have accessory holders, but what if you don't want them on the side? Something like that. Or on my Pit Boss, I have a porthole. There's nothing to clog it. So what I do, this is a cheaper version or just a little, this is 25 pounds, this is 100 pounds. I just put this right over top of the hole, just like that. And it keeps the smoke from leaving that little porthole. Last on the list, pellet storage. You can see I've got half bags in there and that is very, very common. You might think, I don't need something to protect my pellets. I can just keep them in the bag. I bought them that way. I agree and I do the same thing. What I've found is that depending on what kind of pellet you use, it's not gonna matter. This is from Traeger, obviously from Kingsford. The five gallon buckets, they hold more little easier to dump. But what I like about them is this right here. This is what I wish I knew early on. It's not necessarily about pellet storage as much as it gives you more freedom to try different brands of pellets and different flavors, right? So most pellet grills have a pellet dump. The wide mouth and the sturdiness of this allows you to dump your pellets out. And when you dump it out, you set it on the ground, it's not that narrow box that you see from Traeger and Kingsford, although it's just considered pellet storage. But when you buy a five gallon bucket like this, it just gives you a little bit more freedom and options. I never found that pellet storage was as important as the option and the freedom to try different pellets. This gives you that option. So if you fill up your Traeger um, and you wanna try a cherry, but then somebody says, hey, recommend the apple. Well, are you gonna burn through all the cherry before you put in the apple? You're probably just gonna dump it out. Let me show you this trick. You could take a piece of blue tape or I've just written on here because I know there's certain type of pellets that I use all the time. Charcoal blend or charcoal pellets. This is fruit, so this could be apple. If you mix apple and cherry, whiskey, competition, and there's wood chips that's actually in there. So the wood chips are specifically for the Lone Star Grills only. Um, so you can imagine that when it comes to containers like this, what happens if you dump your cherry, you put your apple in there, now all of a sudden, where do you put your apple if you wanna to go to something different? So I know it sounds crazy, but I feel like the five gallon buckets are the way to go, but you guys can pick out 50 of these and 50 of these or five of these and five of these, or I think Oklahoma Joe makes one as well that has a sifter on the bottom and you raise that up and it takes the dust from the pellets out from underneath, whatever you guys wanna do. Alrighty, we're talking about honorable mentions. I have three honorable mentions here. First and foremost are the grease trap liners or the, uh, the whatever it's called. You know, obviously you can buy them and like, you can buy the brands if you wanted to, but I buy off brand because they're cheaper and we go through so many. Uh, whether you're cleaning um, or just have go through a lot of grease, it's just honestly, these things are really, really effective. I like these way better on a pellet smoker than I do a griddle. I typically don't use liners on a griddle because I feel like I clean the grease out way more often but these actually hold the pellet ash and all that soot and build up of like the sauces and the fats and all that stuff these work exceptionally well i highly recommend those second on the honorable mention heavy duty aluminum foil and your butcher paper doesn't matter what brand you get it's all peach paper at its core different logos on it everybody's got their own now honestly i just buy the biggest bang for the buck 
whether it be um, you know the price per square foot. I don't care about the brands, so whatever I can get, I get. Um, and then obviously the aluminum foil. It, this can go on your sheet trays while you're baking, smoking bacon, you name it. We use it quite a bit. Some people believe wrapping in most of their meats in aluminum foil. Some people say butcher paper. I'm a cross between the two, so that's probably something that you guys can get familiar with the more you cook. But having both of them to start with is something that I would suggest. That way you can really accelerate that learning curve. Plus, the, honestly, aluminum foil, if you put a pot on your pellet smoker, there's a lot of times in most, most of my videos that I'll protect my Dutch oven, my skillet, my pot, or something like that by a piece of aluminum foil under the bottom, and it just stops that soot and grease and ash and stuff from getting on the bottom. And last but not least, some type of oil. Now, this is duck fat. We have often avocado oil. Uh, Pam is typical as well, a uh, cheap version of Pam, because when you get your smoker, the first thing you wanna do is season it. You put a thin layer of oil all the way around. An aerosol type will be fine, um, but you just wanna protect it so that way when you start it up and stuff, um, you have a good base coat in there and it stops it from rusting. One of the things that I did not do or didn't even know when I got my first pellet grill, to season it. So an aerosol type of oil, I tend to stick with something like this and it's been working for me. So there you have it. Those are our forgotten accessories. I'm sure everybody can have their own forgotten accessory. I'd love to hear your guys' inputs and thoughts down below so we can incorporate that in there. Um, if you guys are interested, we have a written version of this on our website, pelletsandpits.com. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share it with your friends. Peace.